A new study links the risk of autism spectrum disorder with tailpipe emission levels. I'll discuss the latest research today coming up. Hey everyone, Dr. Wesley Davis back with you again today. I make weekly YouTube videos giving you the best evidence-based information to help you have the best possible outcome for you and your baby. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. There are many potential causes of autism theorized. However, more and more data is pointing to environmental exposure, particularly air pollution, as a real potential risk. The largest study to date was just published in the Journal of the American Medical Association for Pediatrics. I'll discuss the latest findings today. First, a little background. Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, is a developmental disorder that is characterized by difficulties in interactions, verbal and nonverbal communication, and repetitive behaviors. The CDC estimates the diagnosis is on the rise. It occurred in about 1 in 150 kids in 2008, and up to 1 in 70 in 2008. 2012. Smaller studies in the past have found an association between the risk for ASD and airborne pollution. It's worth emphasizing also that vaccines have conclusively not been associated with autism. There are multiple well-designed large studies covering thousands and thousands of kids that have clearly ruled this out as a potential cause. I'm not going to discuss that further today. So the study we're talking about today was a population-based study in Vancouver, Canada. It examined nearly all births in Vancouver from 2005 to 2009 with follow-up until 2014. The diagnosis for ASD was made with with a standardized and very strict criteria, and the exposures to the airborne pollution were made with high-resolution logistic regression models that could estimate the airborne pollution per trimester down to a precision of 10 square meter area. So basically, they could figure out where the mom was on average for a trimester, like her home residence, and, and estimate the average pollution exposure per trimester. And the risk was examined for three major airborne pollutants, PM2.5, nitric oxide, and nitric dioxide. These are typical particles that are emitted from tailpipe emissions and also from burning solid fuels like wood. The data were examined for 132,000 births, and about 1,300 kids were diagnosed with ASD. And the results were subtle, but there was an association with levels of exposure of nitric oxide with the risk of a diagnosis of ASD being made. They found there was about a 7% higher risk of ASD per 10 parts per billion of nitric oxide. That association was still noted after adjusting for things like maternal age, race, income, where they lived, birth month, birth year, all those things were ruled out in the logistic regression analysis and proven that there was still an association between levels of nitric oxide and the ASD risk. It's important to realize that Vancouver has really good air quality, typically on average about 11 to 15 parts per billion of nitric oxide and nitric dioxide. And that is several times better than what we see here in Utah. Check out this graph here. The range is about 60 to 80 parts per billion for nitric dioxide. We don't have data for nitric oxide available for comparison, but the levels were similar in the Canadian study for nitric oxide and nitric dioxide. And the U.S. national standard is, a bit, is less than 100 parts per billion. So it's important to realize that that 7% increased risk of ASD diagnosis was per every additional 10 parts per billion. And we get up to 50 to 60 parts per billion during our inversions here in Utah. So if this if this association holds true, we're looking at potentially several times higher risk of ASD diagnosis being made in our kids thanks to the level of air pollution here in Utah. So in addition to the potential risk of ASD, there are many studies that link other adverse outcomes during pregnancy with bad air quality. There have been other studies showing an increased risk of things like preterm birth, small for gestational age, and certain birth defects and even infant death. So this begs the question, what can I do to re reduce the risk of ASD in my baby? One obvious thing to do is limit outdoor exposure during times of bad air quality, during our inversions here in Utah, for example. You can check out the Utah Air app and it will show you real time as well as forecast data for the air quality over the next several days. And I'll show a little screenshot up here of that. I'll put a link in the description also so you can get the app for yourself. Another thing we can do is we can all reduce activities that contribute to the bad air quality. So uh, reduce driving during periods of inversions carpool, reduce the use of gas-powered snow blowers and lawnmowers, as these things contribute to the air quality significantly as well. And hey, if you're in the market for a new car, an electric car it has multiple times less emissions, even when you account for your power source coming from a power plant somewhere, uh, and especially if you manage to get solar panels as well. So, you know, we're all in this together, and the, the small actions of numerous people can really add up to improved health outcomes for all of us. I think we can all also support improved air quality standards. I'm not trying to get political here, but the health of our kids and ourselves is on the line. So that's about it for today. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.